For centuries, astronomers from far and wide have peered into the sky in search of wonder, and wonder was indeed found. From the dazzling rings of Saturn to the scorching, hot atmosphere of Venus and the chaotic storms of Jupiter, our solar system is a place of wonder that we're just beginning to explore. Since the time of Galileo, astronomers were only equipped with telescopes that didn't really compare to the ones we have now. Yet, even then, their yearning for knowledge propelled them forward. In more recent times, scientists have sent out numerous probes and satellites to scour the universe, and they have given us intimate portraits of the celestial bodies that surround us. In our journey to extend knowledge, we've stumbled upon great discoveries that have been and will be incredible for the betterment of humanity. Discoveries of planets and moons that have the same signature of life that we have here on Earth. Revelations in their cosmic composition edge us closer to answering that infamous question. Is there life out there? The blunt answer is that yes, there may actually be life out there. Over the past few decades, we've managed to look at the intricacies of the planets that surround us and their orbiting moon. Through these studies, scientists have discovered that there are already the ingredients of life in these celestial bodies. Numerous moons, especially, have been identified with the possibility of possessing said ingredients of life. Join us as we take a deeper look at some neighboring bodies that show signs of supporting life. Before we dive straight in, let's talk about habitability. It's the study of whether a moon could potentially host life. But remember, potential doesn't mean certainty. Knowing if moons are habitable is important for finding extraterrestrial life. However, there are certain factors to consider. Scientists think that moons will have similar conditions for living on their surfaces as Earth-like planets. This includes things like the star they orbit, how far away they are from the sun, how big they are, and how they were formed. The conditions for surface water are absent from the moons in our solar system that are within the habitable zone, such as our moon, and the two Martian moons. We don't know how this affects habitability, but all the moons in our solar system that have a planetary mass are tidally locked, meaning one side always faces their planet. According to research, it is possible that moons may possess deep biospheres, similar to those found on Earth. The most promising candidates are icy moons such as Europa around Jupiter and Enceladus around Saturn, where it is believed that subsurface liquid water exists. In 2005, Scientists were surprised when they discovered that water mist was shooting into space from cracks in the icy surface of Saturn's moon, Enceladus. This made scientists interested in other icy moons in the outer solar system because some of them might have oceans of liquid water under their icy shells. Scientists hold the belief that these moons, including those situated around Saturn, Jupiter, and Neptune, may serve as ideal locations for the exploration of extraterrestrial life. Future missions like JUICE and Europa Clipper by the European Space Agency and NASA will look at Jupiter's moons Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. These missions will provide us with valuable information about the outer solar system. Researchers from the Network for Ocean Worlds, commonly known as NOW, hold the belief that these moons may possess the necessary conditions for life, including liquid water and interactions between water and rocks, akin to the environments found on Earth that support microbial life. Numerous moons such as Enceladus, Titan, Triton, Europa, Ganymede, and many more have the potential to support life in various forms, including frozen regions, saltwater oceans beneath their surfaces, methane and ethane rivers, and brines and deep craters. These frozen moons may even contain liquid water-filled pores that could harbor microbial organisms, NASA's NOW project brings together scientists from different fields to study the possibility of life in places like Earth's oceans. Researchers hope to gain insights into the potential for extraterrestrial life within our solar system by studying Earth's watery environments. Through these efforts, scientists want to find out if life could exist on these moons today and if life could exist beyond Earth. Saturn's sixth biggest moon is Enceladus which is the 19th biggest moon in the solar system, is pretty small at about 500 kilometers, or 310 miles wide. Its surface is mostly covered in clean ice, which makes it look very bright. So, 
even at noon, Enceladus's surface is freezing and only reaches negative 198 degrees Celsius or negative 324.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Even though it is small, Enceladus has a lot of surface features, including old, heavily cratered areas and younger, tectonically deformed areas. On August 28, 1789, Enceladus was first discovered by William Herschel, but it wasn't until the Voyager spacecraft Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 flew by Saturn in the early 1980s that more information about Enceladus was found. In 2005, Cassini began conducting close flybys of Enceladus, providing detailed observations of his surface and environment. Cassini's investigations revealed the presence of water-rich plumes coming from the moon's south polar region. These plumes are the result of cryovolcanism, which is when water vapor, molecular hydrogen, other volatile substances, and solid materials like sodium chloride crystals and ice particles are thrown into space. The clouds release around 200 kilograms, or 440 pounds, of material every second. Over 100 geysers have been found so far. Some water vapor is redirected as snow while the remainder escapes and contributes to the formation of Saturn's E-ring. For those of you wondering, the E-ring is the second outermost ring and is expansive. It consists of many tiny micron and submicron sized particles of water ice with silicates, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. In 2014, Cassini found evidence of a deep ocean under Enceladus's south polar region. The ocean is thought to be around 10 kilometers, or 6 miles deep. Mathematical modeling has shown that this subsurface ocean exists. The geysers, along with the discovery of internal heat and the lack of impact craters in the South Polar region, show that Enceladus is currently active. Like many other moons in the large systems of giant planets, Enceladus is in an orbital resonance. This resonance with the neighboring moon DNA causes fluctuations in its orbital eccentricity, which are tidally influenced. This tidal heating generates internal heat, fueling the moon's geological activity. Cassini looked at the gases in Enceladus and found evidence of a process called hydrothermal activity, which is any process associated with igneous activity involving the action of very hot water. This could be causing complicated chemical reactions. The ongoing investigation suggests that the hydrothermal environment on Enceladus could be suitable for microorganisms, similar to those found in the vicinity of Earth's hot spring. Additionally, the presence of methane in the plumes could be attributed to biological processes. When Celadus is a defiant discovery, but Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, is as fascinating if not more so. The celestial body stands out for several reasons. First, it has a dense atmosphere, which is a characteristic shared only with Earth among known objects in space. Second, Titan's surface is dotted with evidence of solid liquids, making it an exceptional spot for scientific exploration. Titan is one of the seven moons in orbit around Saturn that has a rounded shape due to its gravitational forces. It is 50% larger in diameter than the Earth's moon and 80% more massive. In fact, Titan surpasses Mercury in size, although it is only 40% as massive Titan was discovered by Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens in 1655. It became the first known moon of Saturn and the sixth known planetary satellite. It orbits Saturn at a distance of 20 times the radius of Saturn itself. If you could see Saturn, it would be 11 times bigger in Titan's sky than the moon looks from Earth. Titan is composed primarily of ice and rocky material, which is likely arranged in layers with a rocky core in the center. Its surface is young and has a smooth texture with few impact craters. The 2004 cassini huygens mission revealed the existence of liquid hydrocarbon lakes in Titan's polar regions, which were previously undiscovered. The atmosphere of Titan consists mainly of nitrogen, with minor elements playing a role in the formation of methane and ethane clouds. These atmospheric conditions result in weather patterns resembling those found on Earth, such as those caused by wind and rain. Because of this, Titan has features like dunes, rivers, lakes, and seas, likely made of liquid methane and ethane and deltas. Its climate changes with the seasons like Earth's weather patterns do. With its intriguing mix of liquids and a nitrogen atmosphere, Titan's methane cycle bears striking similarities to Earth's water cycle. The temperatures on Titan, however, 
are considerably lower, averaging 94 Kelvin, negative 179 Celsius, or negative 290 Fahrenheit. These distinctive features make Titan an intriguing celestial body that's worth further investigation. Cassini launched a lander on Titan, the alien world most similar to Earth, with vast plains and canyon lands. It ascended onto a plain composed of ice grains and discovered evidence of immense hydrocarbon lakes. Like Earth, Titan has a dense atmosphere made up mostly of nitrogen, but it lacks oxygen. The moon has a lot of liquid methane and ethane, which makes it look hazy and orange. The compounds have a similar circulation cycle to water on Earth, which could support methane-based life. Moving out of Saturn, we come to Triton, a moon that orbits the planet Neptune. It was discovered by an astronomer named William Lassell on October 11, 1846, just a few weeks after Neptune was discovered. Triton is the largest moon of Neptune, and it offers some unique features. One unusual thing about Triton is its orbit. Triton is different from other moons because it moves in the opposite direction of its planet's rotation. Scientists believe that Triton originated as a separate object in the Kuiper Belt, a cluster of icy objects beyond Neptune, and was subsequently entrapped by Neptune's gravity. Triton is about the same size as Earth's moon, and it always keeps the same side facing Neptune. However, because of its tilted orbit, both of its poles get a turn facing the Sun. Triton has a diameter of 1680 miles, or 2700 kilometers. The surface of Triton has few craters and is covered in smooth volcanic plains, mounds, and round pits made by icy lava flows. Triton has a density that is twice that of water. This satellite has a denser mass than almost any other satellite of a celestial body. Europa and Io have higher densities. This suggests that Triton's interior contains more rock than the icy satellites of Saturn and Uranus. Triton has a frozen nitrogen crust and an icy mantle believed to cover a core of rock and metal. Researchers believe that the icy layers are composed of a rocky and metallic core. The planet has a thin atmosphere, dominated by nitrogen, resulting from the volcanic activity that occurs beneath its surface. Triton is known to have active geysers, similar to those on Earth, Io, and the planet Venus. Triton is freezing, with temperatures reaching negative 391 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 235 degrees Celsius. The bulk of the nitrogen on its surface is frozen as ice, making it very reflective. When sunlight hits Triton, about 70% of it is reflected back into space. The only spacecraft that has visited Neptune and Triton is NASA's Voyager 2. During its flyby in 1989, Voyager 2 discovered the active geysers on Triton and measured its frigid temperatures. Triton remains one of the few moons in our solar system that is geologically active. The jarring shift in the moon's path may have accelerated its temperature, possibly warming a global ocean beneath the crust. The sun warms the moon a little during certain times of the year, even though it is 4.5 billion kilometers away. Heading back in from Neptune, we spot Europa, one of Jupiter's moons and the smallest of the four largest moons, called the Galilean moons. It is also the sixth closest moon to Jupiter among the 95 known moons that orbit the planet. The name Europa comes from a Phoenician queen who was adored by the Roman god Jupiter. Europa is approximately one-third the size of Earth's moon and is composed primarily of rock, with a crust composed of icy water. It has a very thin atmosphere, which is mostly composed of oxygen. Europa's smooth surface is dotted with light-colored cracks and streaks, and there are a few craters. Several telescopes from Earth and space probes that flew by the moon have been used to study Europa. The slick surface of Europa is particularly intriguing, hinting at the existence of a subterranean ocean. It is thought that the ocean under Europa's surface stays liquid because of the tidal forces from Jupiter's gravity. This ocean could be home to extraterrestrial life. Scientists think that the heat from the waves causes the ice to move, like how the Earth's plates move. This makes chemicals from the ocean below mix with the ice. Some features on Europa may be covered with sea salt from the ocean, which would show that the water in the moon's rocky interior have interacted. Water vapor plumes have been found on Europa that look like those on Saturn's moon Enceladus. 
The plumes may be the result of erupting cryogeysers, which are jets of water vapor bursting from the surface. This discovery has excited scientists, as it suggests that we might be able to study the potential life in Europa's subsurface ocean without having to land on the moon. The 1989 launch of the Galileo mission has given us a wealth of information about Europa. It uncovered evidence that Europa may be releasing fine specks of liquid water 160 kilometers into space. It was also discovered that Jupiter's magnetic fields induced a current indicating salty liquid water was present within the sphere. Europa is the solar system's smoothest object, and there may just be life lingering under the surface. However, no spacecraft has landed on Europa yet. There are plans for future missions like the European Space Agency's Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer, or JUICE, and NASA's Europa Clipper. These missions will learn more about this interesting moon and might even have a spacecraft to explore its surface. Staying in Jupiter's orbit, we head on to Ganymede, a moon that orbits around Jupiter and is the largest moon in our solar system. It's even bigger than the planet Mercury and the dwarf planet Pluto. Researchers have discovered strong evidence that Ganymede has an underground ocean made of salt water. This ocean may contain more water than all the water on Earth's surface. There are layers of ice and ocean stacked on top of each other, somewhat like a club sandwich. One interesting fact about Ganymede is that it has its own magnetic field, which is usually found on planets like Earth. This magnetism creates beautiful auroras, bright ribbons of glowing gas that circle the moon's pole. The aurora sways when Jupiter's magnetic field fluctuates, providing partial evidence for a large saltwater ocean. There is also evidence that suggests that Ganymede possesses a comparatively thin atmosphere composed of oxygen. In June 2021, NASA's Juno spacecraft captured new pictures of Ganymede's surface. These photos revealed craters, diverse terrain types, and long contours that could be the result of tectonic turbulence. The moon's magnetic field is generated by a core made of metallic iron deep inside Ganymede. Around the core, there is a layer of rock and, on top of that, an icy shell. NASA has dispatched several spacecraft to investigate Jupiter and its moons, including Ganymede. The Juno spacecraft was the most recent to take detailed photographs of Ganymede in June 2021. The moon could contain numerous layers of rock, water, and exotic high-pressure ices. The interactions between rock and water are the foundation for the wide range of microbes found on our planet, and Ganymede may have that same characteristic. It is going to take time, but in the years to come, we will know much more about these moons and eventually answer that infamous question, is there life out there? But until then, tell us, what do you think? Which of these moons has the best potential for life? Will Enceladus' subterranean oceans reveal extraterrestrial life? Or is Europa the best candidate? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.